wedding photographers. They just get to work one day, party with people, maybe take some photos, and then they can chill for like a full week, right? Oh yeah, after they copy, back up, count a few thousand of images, then edit them, then export them, then make a slideshow, make a gallery for their clients, uh, prepare a blog, make an album design, and yes, then they can chill for the rest of the week. Wait, but it's already next weekend, so they have to shoot another wedding, right? And that is why I'm here today, to show you all my favorite tools that help me save time doing all these tasks so I can have more time for uh, sending emails, <laughs> posting to Instagram, posting to Instagram stories, making YouTube videos, being my own accountant. Yeah, I should have become farmer, man. Hey, what's up? My name is Magic. I'm a wedding photographer, Sony Europe ambassador, father of four children. And uh, yeah, welcome to my channel. Uh, I talk about photography, weddings and gear. So consider subscribing if you're interested in any of these topics. And today I'm sharing my top seven tools that I use in my wedding photography workflow uh, to just save some of my time. Starting with the first task that I always have to do when I come back from wedding, I have to import my cards. And to import, I use software called Photo Mechanic, which can import from few cards in the same time, check for the errors and, and basically make a very quick preview of all the photos. And then I use the same software to call all of these thousands images by marking them in color. So I just mark all of the photos that I want to edit then in Lightroom in one color. I filter them out, copy to another folder, and then that folder I will import to Lightroom. So yeah, second tool that is most crucial to my workflow is the actual Lightroom. So I am a Lightroom user. I was trying to switch a few times to Capture One and that's still a plan at some point in my life to move to Capture One, but for now I'm using Lightroom. So yeah, Adobe makes this very affordable photography plan with Photoshop and Lightroom for like $10 a month. And then you get to use Lightroom Mobile as well. So you can sync the collections from your computer and have access to them via your smartphone or or, or a tablet, uh, which is pretty awesome. So I consider that $10 a month a pretty steal. Yeah, but Lightroom, this is a pretty obvious tool for all like all the photographers. Let's get to some wedding specific uh, softwares. So the third software I use in this workflow would be Smart Slides that I use to create slideshow from the wedding. So Smart Slides has built in music libraries. So you can choose the music for your slideshow and then you just upload the photos and it creates this magical link that you can send to your couple or embed. And in my opinion, slideshows are the best way to present your images to your clients for the first time. So I always encourage them to have like a nice romantic dinner in the evening and then open the slideshow, watch it with music, drink wine and just enjoy the photos that I'm delivering. So smart slides make it really easy to make these slideshows, but sometimes if I want to make like a bigger impact or maybe I want to make like a more custom slideshow that I have like full control over it, then I just use Adobe Premiere Pro. So like a software to basically edit movies. In one of the links in the description, you can find like an example of slideshow that was made using Adobe Premiere. So that tool takes much more time to make an actual slideshow. It kind of requires um, to have like some sort of musical intuition, like knowing where the beat comes and like how the music, you know, goes with the tempo. So it's more time consuming, but the effect is totally worth it for me. So the next software on the way of my delivering images would be PicTime. And oh man, I love PicTime. So I've been working with PicTime for three years, then I became PicTime ambassador. Now I do some webinars with PicTime. So I'm really involved in all that PicTime world. PicTime is the gallery provider that I use 
to deliver my photos to my clients. So I, I basically used a whole bunch of them. I switched from shoot proof to pixie set and then from pixie set to pick time. The moment I first time I saw pick time, I was blown away with how beautiful it is and with integrated shop for clients to purchase the prints or frames from their wedding day. It, it just looks so great. And that integrated shop, has like built in automations to help you inform your clients about some upcoming deals. Uh, for example, Valentine Day is coming, so you might offer some prints with a discount. So it is a beautiful, beautiful gallery, but then very powerful in terms of tools uh, that can help you sell your prints as well. And also in all the galleries that I send to my wedding clients, I include a slideshow that I either make in Smart Slides or Adobe Premiere, I can just insert this as a first scene. So every time they go to their gallery, the first thing that they see is the slideshow, which is amazing. Okay, so my clients got the slideshow, my clients got the gallery so they can download photos, they can purchase prints, what's next? the next things most of my clients would order would be a printed album. So I used to be that person that used Adobe InDesign, so like a very professional software to actually put my images on the spreads and design an album. <laughs> but then it was taking me like hours to, to make an album and then getting some feedback from client, making some changes. It was all uh, quite pain in the ass. Plus the visual aspect of it, you couldn't like actually show the preview of the album to the client in any other way than sending them PDF or embedding PDF on your website. So I started using various tools for album design. In the last year, I started collaborating with this company called Albumworks that made this beautiful, very easy, straightforward tool to design albums. And oh man, like since last year, I, I did not shoot many weddings, but all the albums I had to design last year literally took me minutes versus hours. So my favorite tool in Albumworks is actually the auto design feature. So I pick my images using Photo Mechanic that I want to have an album. I drop them to the album works and I click auto design. It will just create auto design using some crazy AI magic that will just put the right images on the right spread. And this I always use as my first base to send to my clients. And using the preview option with album works, you get this beautiful visualization of the album that clients can easily flick the pages using any device they have like smartphone or tablet or computer and just see that and give me some feedback on like, hey, on page 10, I want to make changes. And then I can go back to it and review the changes and make this whole process really easy and straightforward. So I strongly recommend checking them out. Plus, if you go to albumworks.co, you will see my images there. So that's plus 100 to the respect. I guess. Okay, so my clients got their photos, my clients got their album. What else will I do with my workflow? So there are two more steps. The one is like kind of occasional blogs. So some of the weddings I decide that I want to blog. So I want to publish them on my website. And one of my fellow photographers, James Broadbent from New Zealand, made this amazing tool called Narrative Publish. That is like the separate application that you install on your computer and you import the photos and create beautiful blogs within just minutes by like dragging and dropping photos and changing their sizes, putting two of them together, three of them together. Yeah, I, I love this tool. So like it really helps me to blog even though I don't blog that often. Every time I blog, it's just a pleasure using narrative. And every time I want to make any changes, I can go back to the app, make some changes and then click republish and then it will change it all. So that tool is a great tool if you want to blog more. Okay, and the last but not least, the photos. All the raw files that are piling up on my hard drives, I kind of never delete the raw files. I want to keep them in case in like few years, maybe I want to change something in the edit or I want to redo something. And check this out, because this is quite interesting. On one of the Way Up North conferences that I attended in, in the last few years, I've seen the presentation from the Swiss startup called uh, it was called Dot Photo Raw at that point, but now they they switched the naming to Row Z. And and what 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 it basically does, it shrinks your raw files using some weird crazy algorithms. Again, that's some kind of magic here. And these rows are fully working like like normal rows, but are smaller. So since I was quite skeptical up to the concept itself, I did not use it at first. 
But then I thought like, you know, with this archive system, I might just shrink them if the photos are gonna preserve all the, you know, all the information in it. And I started doing this and I saved like hundreds of hundreds of gigabytes. I think like six or seven terabytes actually, you know, like by shrinking all my archive from my NAS storage. Uh, which is crazy and then every time I check any of the raw files they work exactly like the normal raw files so this tool is amazing I know photographers that are using Rosy in their workflow even before the edit for me there's no need to you know to shrink my files before I edit them but as soon as I'm done with them and I move them to my archives I'm, I'm just shrinking the files and and that's Rosy so yeah, that's my top seven tools that are helping me to save my time and actually save my hard drive space. If you use any of it, let me know down in the comments. I link them all down below. Some of them will have my codes that you can use to get some free months or something like that. Feel free to try them out on your own. And yeah, let me know if that works for you. Thanks so much, magic is out.